It's the time of year to be creating your Christmas tree ornament designs and getting those listed in your print-on-demand shop. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I'm using Kittle to create my Christmas tree ornament designs, and we'll also talk about a couple of tips for creating the listings. So we're gonna start off by just identifying a design that we wanna create a Christmas tree ornament for. I'm using the Sales Samurai Chrome extension here, and I've filtered it down. Basically, I just started by searching for ornaments and I popped open the extension to see all of these related search phrases. And then I use the filters at the top to remove anything that's got over 5,000 competing listings. So we're only seeing the search phrases that have a competition level of 5,000 or less. And so now I'm just looking through to find the lowest competition that still have relatively high search volume. There's the ever popular Bigfoot ornament with the uh, about 400 monthly searches. But another one I see here also within the low 400s for monthly search volume is Bird urban ornament around 2000. And let's use this one to create a design. So for this one, I see some obviously print on demand ornaments here that are just round white ceramic ornaments. So I like that idea for a design. However, what I'm seeing as an opportunity is almost all of the ornaments with that design are just plain white ornaments with black text and very few graphic design elements to them. And that is where Kittle comes in to make this a lot easier because they have some excellent templates that I think the topic of whiskey or bourbon or distillery imagery, that kind of thing. They have some really nice templates, those like logo style templates that I think would be a great fit for that niche. So I'm gonna look at some templates. So I'm just gonna start by searching for whiskey and then we'll see what we've got here. You're gonna find a lot of the logo style template designs here. And I think some of these might be a good fit. This golden oak one, I could see easily replacing this tree with a bourbon barrel or a bottle of bourbon in the middle. This straight shooter tavern one has actually, it's already got like a bottle of bourbon style graphic in here and I like the style. I'm gonna start with this template to make my design. I'm actually gonna use this one to create what I think is a nice design, but something that I think is kind of a mistake if you're designing for the circle round ornaments. All right, so the first thing I wanna do for this is just picture how do I want this to look in the end and I'm gonna restart by replacing this tree in the middle with something more specific to bourbon. So let's come over to elements here on the left and we will search for whiskey again. We'll see what we get. I do, I think I might like these sort of whiskey barrels, or maybe I'll just go with this stack of three barrels. I kind of like the way that this looks as a centerpiece for the design. Very easy to, to make the colors match here. We'll just go to the colors and we'll swap out one of the design colors to see which one we like best. I'm going to stick with the colors that are part of the theme. All right, I'm not going to need these little side elements, so let's get rid of those. I don't know about these accents, if I'm going to keep them or not yet, but let's just start editing our text, and we'll find our own accents. I'd like to go with something a little bit more holiday-themed, and, oh, right at the top, look at this. There's a couple of... All right, I'm going to group these elements together so that I can center all of them together. All right, now I might go for a couple other little accents in here, but let's stop there and say that I am happy with this design. I've already made what I consider to be a mistake when it comes to creating a design for a circular ornament. So I'm just going to get rid of the background and download this to show you what I mean. All right, now we're in the design editor view of a metal ornament by Pick the Gift in the Printify catalog. And here is what I mean. So with round ornaments, especially, you're always going to have this area at the top where you've got the cutout so that it can be hung up on the tree. And that means that your design is actually not going to be perfectly centered in the center of the circle if the design is a circle. It's probably easier to just look at it and see what I'm talking about. So for example, if I just perfectly centered my design here, just filled up the printable space, I even have a, a little bit outside of the safe area lines here, which usually on ornaments is okay to be a little bit outside the lines. I've centered the design, so the dead center of my design is in the dead center of the ornament. This cutout area at the top is a problem. That cutout is going to take a take a big chunk right out of the L in my design. So there's only two ways to avoid that problem. One is much easier to do than the other. So the easy way to avoid that problem is to scale your design down and or shift it down so that you are just avoiding that entire area, that cutout area completely. But now what that does, if we come back to the preview, is 
now it's a circle inside a circle, but it's an off-centered circle inside a circle. And it just, it looks a little odd. It looks a little funny. It looks off-center. You've got extra white space around the top that you don't have around the bottom. The only other way to avoid this issue is to create your design with extra space. For example, this one having text across the top, we would need to come back to our design and adjust this so that when we do maximize it and fill out this space, the L is not here. Now for this one, it might be somewhat simple. I could try try simply putting a couple extra spaces here at the top of the design and it's not quite perfect so I'd still have to play with this because the issue is here that my blank space is not perfectly centered at the top so the point of me showing you all of this frustration and trying to get this right is I think designing a circular graphic for a circle ornament that is the mistake and I've made this mistake myself several times by creating a design that I really liked that was circular in shape and then fighting with the ornament to try and make it look good I actually just fell victim to this mistake in the video that I made about creating a Christmas themed design. I made a Mui Christmas cow themed Christmas design for a t-shirt. Then I put it on an ornament and the round shape, well, didn't look all that great because it wasn't centered. So my opinion is just from the start, go with a design that does not have a circular shape to it. So let's come back to this one and see how this will look once we make some adjustments to it on our round ornament. All right, so for this one, I think this is already fitting pretty well. I think I can get drank lots where straight is here. I can get, maybe I can add of in the middle. I can do bourbon across the bottom. I can do the year where tavern is and maybe something funny where this small text is up here. All right, so there we go. That's what I came up with. Very minimal changes to the design elements other than just editing the text to make it fit. I resized just a couple of things to make it fit a little bit. And now you could certainly change the color theme of this as well if you wanted it to be red and greenish for Christmas. Maybe go with dark green in some of the areas where you have dark red. I'm just gonna leave it as is for now, but of course there's a lot more that you could do to change it. I'm also gonna go ahead and add a texture to this because this one actually does not look like it has a texture on it already. So let me turn off the background. All right, now we've got just our design here. And now I wanna go over to the left menu and find textures on the bottom. And I'm gonna maybe go with a paper texture here. So let's find a paper texture. All right, I think I like that one. That's pretty subtle, but I need to make two quick adjustments. One is gonna be the opacity. I'm gonna turn it down just a little, so it's a little bit lighter. I don't want it darkening up the design a whole lot. So I'm bringing that slider all the way down to, I think maybe 50% looks pretty good. Then I'm gonna use this clip content button here right above my head so that the texture is not a applied to the transparent background areas. It is only applied to the design. All right, now we're ready to export our design under the download options here. And this template was by default 1200 by 1200. I'm just gonna change the DPI here to 300. That's gonna make it significantly larger, 5,000 by 5,000. That's much bigger than what we need for an ornament, but that's okay. It's much better to have a bigger file and scale it down because you'll get better print quality than it is to scale up a print file that's too small. You could also download this as an SVG and then not worry about scaling it. I'm gonna select the remove background option just in case, and then I can download it as a PNG or an SVG. One other benefit of downloading a file that is too large or as an SVG is if you start to sell these ornaments and you think the design now might be a good fit to put on a coffee mug or a t-shirt, you'll already have a print file that you can use. All right, so let's come back to our design editor here and put this design into our metal ornament. I think you can already see this is going to allow us to fill up more of the space while still being centered in the circle, which is exactly what we want. Printify has these little guidelines now that will help you kind of see when your design is centered horizontally and vertically. Again, I think it's okay to be a little bit outside of the safe area on these. I've not had an issue on my samples with anything getting cut off. Now let's take a look at this preview here. Now we haven't even done the background yet, but just look at how much better that looks than that weird off-centered circle when we brought it below or when we were trying to play around with fitting it around that cutout. No frustration, no making adjustments. It's nice and centered and it still fills up a good amount of the print area. One other thing we can do is we can fill in the background. So this isn't just a plain white background. So the background color in the design editor currently is set to white. You can see that Printify gives you some predetermined color options here. If you don't see any that look particularly good with your design, you can create your own custom background color using the hex code here. And the easiest way I think to do that is just to come back to Kittle and we'll turn our background back on and then we can use the background settings menu here to go through some different color options and see what background color we like. All you have to do now is just locate the hex code field right here 
and copy that and bring it on over to Printify. We'll paste it in here. There we go. Now it looks exactly like it did in Kittle. We'll go back to preview and there we go. There's our design. Now for this design, I personally, I like this background color, but now I don't really love how some of the text doesn't pop out as much. So I might make an adjustment there to some of the smaller text. And I could have caught that by turning the background on while we were still here in Kittle and just kind of looking at it, taking a step back and looking at it before I exported it. So you can definitely catch something like that before you export to Printify if you turn the background on and then decide what you want your background color to be. And on some designs, it's gonna be fine to leave it as the base white color if that's what really looks best. But for this particular niche, remember what I saw was a lot of plain white with black text. So I want to do something totally different. All right, I have one more tip for you on these ornaments and that is to add a personalization when it makes sense or at least an option for personalization might need to make this just a touch smaller here our print file to give a little bit of room we'll slide it up a little bit my tip for how to do this is actually to use printify's built-in custom text layer so that you don't have to go edit the original print file so don't do anything differently when you create your design do exactly what we've already done here but now on the right menu right behind my head where it says add design click on that and then go to custom text this is going to add a custom text layer where now you can add a personalization sample to the design now the selection of fonts that printify has currently is not the biggest selection in the world but usually there's something usable in here again you can select a custom font color so that it matches exactly what you have in your design so let's come back to Kittle right here in the bottom corner. You can see you've got project colors. So just click on that and that's where all your colors will pop out. So if I want this light color, I just click on that. I select the hex code. I copy it, come back to Printify, my font color here, paste in the hex code. Now I've got a font color that matches my design perfectly. So we'll get that centered here and then we'll come back to preview. Now, of course, we'd still want to apply this to both sides if we were doing the metal ornament that's got a design printed on both sides. The benefit of using Printify's built-in text feature is that it'll save you some time when you need to personalize an order. Let me show you an example. Let's pretend we got this order in for our drank lots of bourbon ornament and it has personalization on it. Now we created it with just that text layer that just says Dave as the example, but let's pretend that we got this order in and the personalization they want is John. What we're gonna need to do is edit this order and swap out this product for one that we have personalized. Personalized. And to do that, we come back to our My Products page. We find our Drank Lots of Bourbon ornament, the one that is published. I know this one says unpublished, but you'd be finding the one that is actually published in your Etsy shop. And you would use the duplicate feature here or the copy button over here. So copy that. It'll create the copy and drop it right above it. Now click on the Edit Design Paintbrush. And now all we have to do on this copy is come into our text layer and change it to the name that they wanted in their personalization. Check your preview, of course. Make sure it looks good. Hit save product in the bottom right corner. Now, when we save this, the thing I like to do is I like to just at the very beginning, put the personalization that I applied. So I know what's different about this one. Otherwise it'll just look like a copy. So I'm going to put John at the beginning. So we're going to save that as a draft. Do not publish that to your store. Just save it as a draft. Now we go back to our orders page and we open up that very same order. Then we click on the edit order button and it will take you to this navigation where you can edit the order. We're going to click on add product to order. And the one that we just personalized should be at the very top of our list. So we'll click on select. And now you want to delete the original one. So the one that does not say John in it, we're going to delete off the order. Then we can proceed to the shipping step, calculate shipping. That'll take you to the confirmation page to show you all the details one last time before you click on the fulfill button in the bottom right corner right behind my head. So from there, just click on fulfill and your order's done. Now, as a reminder with Printify, if you sell personalized products, you do need to have your order fulfillment set to manual because if you use any of the automatic fulfillment options, whether it is immediately or in 24 hours, your orders are going to be submitted to production automatically with the print file that's on that listing. Technically, you could use the automatic order submission in 24 hours if you trust yourself to always catch these within 24 hours. However, I definitely don't trust myself to catch it within 24 hours, especially if I'm traveling or something like that. So I leave mine set to manual. So that's how I'm using Kittle to create my Christmas ornament designs this season. And like I mentioned, they do have a lot of other templates that work really well. If you're creating a design for like a Christmas tree shaped ornament or a stocking shaped ornament, just look for a template that is more vertically oriented and start editing 
one of those instead and you'll already have a design shape that will work better. So to recap, my main tips for designing ornaments, especially the circular ones, is don't worry about creating a circular design to match the shape. In my opinion, it just adds frustration to getting the design just right on the ornament. Just go ahead and create a design shaped more like this one, like sort of that classic rectangular or square shape, and it'll be a lot easier to center it and fill up the print area. Check the background color that you want to use with your design before you export it so you know how the design looks on the background and take advantage of Printify's built-in text feature for personalizations to save yourself time when you're fulfilling those personalized orders. And lastly, that one extra tip about when you download or export your design files, always get them in a bigger size than what you need for ornaments or download them as an SVG if you have the ability, just in case you decide to start offering that same design on another product that requires a larger print file, you'll already have it in a format that works. I hope you found some of this information helpful as you're designing your Christmas tree ornaments for this holiday season. Let me know in the comments if you have any tips for designing Christmas tree ornaments as well so that we can all learn from each other. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and hit that like button so that YouTube can show it to more people. And subscribe to the POD Insights channel so you can be notified when I come out with future videos. Thanks everybody. See you next time.